This cycle's rendered just too slow for you uh -huh. Well here are seven tips for you to chronically abuse Tip one, cycles X is the motherfucking best Why he's candidate when alpha's overclocking all the rest Check it out, one to three's on the screen's free Language to every older version zipping the fans peeing on the squeeze so listen, while I would like nothing more than to do the rest of this tutorial and like song and rap and stuff like that and have a lot of uh, creative ideas, uh, the reality is in two days I'm going to be doing that Massachusetts walk, walking all the way across Massachusetts, hopefully, uh, which means that I have a deadline coming up and there's no way that I can finish this in the creative way that I want. Uh, so, uh, what we are going to compromise with is I'm going to give you the seven tips in kind of like a standard blunder tutorial way, uh, but just know that in my heart, I wish I could have uh, done it fully, but yeah, th th that's just the reality, so l l let's do it the way that God intended, uh, which is the boring, <laughs> the, the boring method. So again, the first tip is Cycles X. You can take any blend project that you've ever made in an earlier version and just literally drop it into Blender 3.0, and some people are reporting renders that are up to seven times faster, which I've never experienced, but I've definitely had like two times speed ups or something like that. So for free, you don't need to do any work. Just put your blend project in Cycles X. On to tip number two, if you haven't already, make sure you enable adaptive sampling. What this does is it makes sure that every tile in your render isn't necessary the same sample count as, you know, whatever you inputted, but tiles that don't require as many samples don't, you know, have that computation put forth. So adaptive sampling is just another free way. You just hit a checkbox and immediately you get uh, faster renders. And talking about sampling, another free thing you can do is just take your sample count and drop it, which obviously makes your render faster, but that's because it's at a lower quality. Uh, but to compensate, you just enable denoising, which nowadays has gotten very, very good with AI accelerated denoising. Both the optics and the open image denoise versions are frankly insane. You can get like very close to the original result at much less, you know, at a smaller sample count, uh, which means that you're rendering much faster. So denoising, make sure you use it. If you're not, uh, you're crazy. Another tip that has to do with kind of like dropping down the quality in a not noticeable way is taking your light bounces and trying to find the smallest number that gives you kind of like identical results. Again, uh, light bounces are basically saying how many times should each particle of light, if you want to think about that, uh, bounce before it's actually calculated. And you want to minimize those as bounces if possible. It makes your global illumination slightly less accurate, but generally, um, it doesn't look too different if you don't go crazy with this. So drop your light bounces. And I swear this is the last tip I'm gonna give you inside the render tab, but that's, you know, where most of the stuff happens. Uh, take your tile size and start playing around with it. Tile size is essentially how big are these squares or tiles uh, when we render, so you can have super small or super big tiles. And you might think that it doesn't really matter too much. You know, small tiles means you have a lot of them going fast or whatever. Um, no, it turns out that the correct tile size can literally we make your render faster. Uh, if you do not know what those pixel values are for that, there's actually an add-on for this. That is an auto tile size add-on. Just enable that. And that is again, another free way uh, to, you know, drop your render time. And now we're starting to get into some of the kooky things you can do, but these are kind of the biggest time savers. So uh, you know how motion blur and depth of field take a lot of time to render if you decide to enable them and you want to keep them enabled because they look good. Uh, well, it turns out that both of these things and some other effects can be calculated in post by using a bit of fake so for example, with the depth of field, if you saw the mist pass tutorial that I made, you know, that that was the last video, you can use a depth pass or a mist pass to actually fake depth of field and it will look pretty correct because again, it's depth dependent. And motion blur actually is something you can calculate as well, not only with a vector pass, but programs like DaVinci actually have, I think it's an AI accelerated uh, motion blur calculation where you can just say, here's some video, whether it be a render or actual footage, and you say, guess what the motion blur would look like? It's not 100% accurate, but it looks good enough and uh, you don't have to render motion blur or depth of field. And now finally, for the last tip, which is definitely the craziest, but if it works, you can get like 75% saves, if not crazier on your render time. Uh, this is interpolation, where instead of just, you know, messing around with our frame or something like this, uh, we're saying for an animation, I don't want you to render every single frame, so we could render every other frame or every fourth frame. And it turns out that there's actually AI programs or whatever that will actually interpolate the frames that are in between. So you could literally render every other frame and have a program nearly instantly kind of interpolate those frames in between. There's stuff called Rife, uh, there's stuff called Dance, and I, I, I don't even know what any of these things are called, but there's a free program out there called Flow Frames where you can literally just drop in a video or an image sequence and it will uh, fill in the frames in between and it's honestly uh, surprisingly and alarmingly accurate. Hello there friends, I am here to tell you that this video is sponsored by Skillshare and for those of you that don't know what Skillshare is, is our, is it a, is it a, 
A multiple or a singular? Good question. Uh, Skillshare is a online learning community with thousands of courses going over things like, probably not harmonica, but definitely music, photography, videography, blender as well, and we'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, there's also online workshops on Skillshare, so you can work alongside thousands of other enthusiastic people such as yourself. It's like a whole colony of you. It's a, you're, you're living in this clone society that is uh, Skillshare, and you're one of them. Anyways, one course in particular that I would like to recommend to you is our very own Southern Shoddy. Remington actually has a uh, Blender course about like character animation and stuff like that. Um, so if you're interested in going over a full course, not just individual tutorials when it comes to the Blender space, Southern Shoddy, who goes by Remington because that's his name, um, has you covered over there. You can watch that course and all other premium courses ad-free. That's right, uh, when you have the premium uh, version of Skillshare. And that membership of Skillshare that I just talked about, the premium membership, it's already super affordable at under, not over, but under $10 a month, but I'm here to play harmonica badly and to uh, make that deal sweeter. The first thousand of my subscribers, to click the link in the description, and I don't want non-subscribers, but you know. Uh, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description are gonna get a free premium membership of Skillshare, that thing we just talked about, uh, that you get to try out for free. And then um, you, if you wanna continue after that, it's under $10 a month annually, uh, you know the deal. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring, and thank you Harmonica for bringing good vibes.